Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. We have the Yamaha DGX670 Portable Grand Piano. Definitely portable when you don't buy their wood stand. Very portable in fact, because you just buy one of these metal stands that I have down below which can rise right up so you can stand up and play or sit down and play. The very bottom setting on this stand is perfect for sitting down and playing. Now I will have a separate video on the stand what I'll probably end up doing is a screenshot video. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll just, be, because you get to see the top, the bottoms, the sides, all that, right, on the stand. Um, or I may do it with a split of both. Here's the stand here, and here it is on the screenshot. We'll figure that one out, but that video is coming uh, as well, probably later today. But this morning I thought, why not let's get this part done, because it's been a while. And my wrist is healed up enough I can play piano again, so I'm quite happy. Um, I miss playing, uh, because when you don't use it, you can lose it, right? Um, but uh, anyway, so I have different tutorial videos on the styles, the voices, um, style control. Now, I haven't done the registration memory yet where you can save your own favorite presets for one-touch access stuff. Um, I haven't done that yet, still got to figure out that programming. I've gone through some of the basic stuff and shown you some of the more overwhelming features of the MIDI area and stuff that you can change different characteristics of those sounds. I've shown you those areas a little bit in some videos. Um, it's quite cool, you know? I mean, there's a lot in this, including a full color screen. Now, if you've had one of the other DGX uh, series uh, keyboards, like the 650 uh, or the 660, you'll know that those had a monochrome screen, they had different button layouts, they're different, different stuff altogether. This has more sounds packed into it, uh, more styles, it's got more of everything. Um, it's just like, oh, so much, right? Um, you know, plus we got the Bluetooth access in this too, which is a lot nicer. Um, we, we have our microphone, one touch mic setting button, boom, we're in here. We can, you know, mess around with our level, our pan control, uh, the effect that we're going to use, whether it be reverb, chorus, what have you, um, that sort of thing. Uh, we, we can change other different characteristics about the mic. Uh, full EQing capability as well, which is also awesome bonus there too. Um, so if you are a one-man show, you've got your drum system here with all your styles. You have simple mode, which gives you a basic beat. Uh, so if we hit a key with the accompaniment, for example, we'll get that, right? We don't like the accompaniments. We can have just the beat, or we can add in simple, and that gives us the bass line with the beat, okay? We also have different variations, etc., right? Um, and going through between your chorus and your verses, that sort of thing. Pretty handy stuff, okay? Um, the voices are, are in all the pianos, all the accordions and organs, all the guitars and basses, all the strings and choir, uh, etc., right? Same as your styles, country and blues, dance and R&B. This layout makes things so much simpler to find stuff than ever before. And like I said, they've added a lot more in, which is really nice too. But if we go into the piano area, push the button, boom. Now, if you navigate the menu with the, the twisty dial here, you won't change anything until you press the enter button. Okay, so we want the octave piano one. If we want to go through the pages, we can just keep doing this, or we can scroll this way through the pages, or we have one touch button. Page four, for example, okay? Um, and I want to just scroll over quickly, so I just want to hit this button, boom, CP80 stage. Right, kind of cool. But say I don't want a piano, uh, I want something like strings and choir. Whatever, right? So I want that. 
Okay, so we're done in here. So I'm going to just exit out of there. It's on my list. Now I want to take off my main. I want to go to layer and I want to change stuff in there. Right now I'm on concert strings. And the reason why I turn off main is I don't want to hear it. I want to hear what this is, right? It's like, wait a second, that, that's not layer. That's, that's voices. That's the same main voice area. I think I made a boo-boo here, right? Okay, so we go and we select it here, press enter. Layer voice will now appear. Great, now I've got it, right? Now I can still use those other voices because they're there. But I want synth, okay? Layer voice synths. Right? Using this as instant access, but using this just is no instant access until we actually hit enter or press a button. Okay, I like that. Enter, exit. Turn off the layer. Left voice. Highlight it. Enter. Okay, so left voice. Uh, for that, let's try. Um, let's go guitar and bass. See the le the left voice is only the left side of the keyboard. So I like that. Exit. So now I have gospel voices, new atmosphere, and I have rock legend. And I still haven't even touched my styles yet. It's that easy to use this thing, right? But I want to have all three on. I'm kind of not really digging that gospel voice. So I want back up into there. Press enter. And I want a synth pad and that's kind of cool. Exit. So now I got new atmosphere, I've got the oxygen, I got the rock legend, right? All the three are active now. It's freaky, right? And we still haven't even done our beats yet, right? And the accompaniment works with what you're doing too, right? So that doesn't work well. <laughs> it can follow you too and change things, right? It's kind of a really cool system. Now, if you want to just go back to default, all right, turn the power off. And turn the power back on. Unless you have saved those changes into a registration memory, um, then yeah, it's just gonna go right back to factory de default. Okay. Anyways, plus you have voice effects. And there's so much in this thing, right? So anyway, um, plus your whole recording, multi-track recorder system is built into this thing. Record your performance, save them to your USB stick, add stuff into this thing too. You can add in different uh, files as well. Just And the MIDI section is just wild in this thing. Um, there's definitely a lot to be learned, obviously, okay? I mean, but you can also play this as just a basic system and just screw around with stuff and learn as you go. You can read the manual learn more advanced stuff about it and how to do things, whatever, you know, I mean, it's kind of up to you. I encourage you to download the manual for free before purchasing to make sure that this is actually what you want uh, and what you require as well. It's not, when it comes to a piano, it, it's not just about, oh, I want this, <gasps> look at that, 
do I need it though? Is it going to serve my purpose, right? Guitars are no different, except in my case with guitars, I want them all and <laughs> I only need realistically two guitars and electric and acoustic, but I'm just a little greedy Gretchen, you know. No, actually I have a bad addiction to, to music stuff. Um, but pianos, of course, I only need really one machine that can do it all for me. And this does everything except for one area, and that's my biggest disappointment in this thing. And that is going to be in the percussion area. They have what's called Noise Kit, SFX Kit 1, and SFX Kit 2. This is where you're going to find things like water, rain, thunder, helicopters, car crashing, whistles, you name the freaking sound that's a sound effect. What they have is what they have, but where do you find them? That's the problem, right? Getting into the effects area is one thing, but actually being able to get used to the, like get access to the stuff, that's another story. Dead keys, dead keys. Oh, this is where the disappointment happens for me. In the 650 and the 660, yeah, we just had the dial. We didn't have some of those other fancy buttons here. But we at least had a menu to scroll through and go, oh, roller coaster, this, that, and the other thing, right? And every single key, black and white, was available through every frequency spectrum of each sound. So you could build things up as you went, any way you wanted, right? And then you go to the next sound, okay? So you had a number pad here, 724, 727, etc., right? And that was great. So we knew where our sound effects started, where they ended, um, and we knew what they were on screen. It told us what effect that was there. This doesn't do that. Which made me kind of wonder with the, with the whole thing with the drum kits, um, when we go to certain drum kits uh, in here, we'll see a little thing show up it says drum kit. Now this doesn't happen on all the kits, but a lot of them. And when you press that button, so that's under page four, which is the fourth button, so it's the bottom button. Now it shows us what drums or what features of drums, like cymbals, crashes. We go to this part of the keyboard, it's gonna show us on screen what's available here, right? And in here, etc. right? So they couldn't do that with the sound effects. But the other problem was with the sound effects too, is because there's no selecting an independent effect anymore, you just find the effect and it just goes from its lowest point and builds right up kind of thing. Or it's just one set level, period. That's all there is to it. One set frequency. And that really sucks. Um, so that actually forced me to rebuy back my, my 453. Uh, Yamaha, um, which is not a sophisticated machine in comparison to a, you know, grand, uh, portable grand like a 650, 660, and this one, the 670. It's a smaller keyboard, but still a very excellent keyboard, great sound in it, uh, but it has all of the effects that are actually in this, this machine. It has them all in that, but at least they're where I, I punch in a number, I've got my cheat sheet of all my favorite effects. Okay, I need this, type it into the pad, boom, and I got every single key. I can build up the sound as I go any way I want, especially when I'm recording into a DAW. It's kind of handy, right? Um, I can do that, but it forces me to own two keyboards, which I didn't want to have to happen. Now, of course, I could always go back to a 660, and I'm happy again, but then I have a lot lesser machine than what this is, and I'm back to a monochrome screen, which I'm now spoiled with color, but I'm also spoiled with a lot more sounds, a lot more usability, more friendly um, in many ways, but not so friendly in other ways with the whole programming thing. If you really want to dive into it, right, you can, but you don't have to, so don't worry. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to run this thing effectively. It's only if you want to get really, really into this keyboard would you ever want to learn about how to reprogram all your different effects and all that jazz. Unfortunately, you can't do anything about this area of Noise Kit SFX1 or SFX Kit 2. Anyways, so a little inconvenience for now. Yamaha could easily fix this problem with a firmware update. I'm sure they can do it. It's really not that difficult. <laughs> they program all this other stuff they've been building for decades. I'm sure they can fix this and get it back to normal. Because the 660 and the 650 
have the same accessibilities to all your sound effects properly and you had every key with each effect, right? Well, yeah, they just totally botched it in this end. I guess what they might be trying to do is go more and more leading toward this series becoming a pro pro series like taking it out of the beginner area and making it more of an intermediate to pro level professional performance system series um and it's kind of like yeah but even the pros like all their sound effects i mean seriously right like come on yeah i'm all smart and your head's up but um anyways so good and bad on that side but that is the worst eyesore of this entire keyboard that for me cheeses me off. For you, you may not care, that's great. Buy the keyboard, you're not gonna regret it. It's an awesome keyboard. The other one thing they did, which was a great bonus, is the music stand, okay? This is now a full length bar support across, and they've made it a lot more heavier duty, even on the back side. Um, so it can hold a lot more weight, like probably about 10 times more weight, because it used to be just a short little piece here and a short little piece here, and that was it, right? And they broke a lot, right? I broke one myself on one of my other DGXs, and I was not happy. Mind you, at least it wasn't that expensive to replace. It was like under 20 bucks, but still, it's gonna happen again and again and again, right? You know, especially if you don't smarten up. But this one at least can hold a lot more weight. It's a lot more stable. That's fantastic. So you can actually put your books on here and not have to worry about it going and crashing to the floor kind of thing, right? So that's a definite big upgrade there. So quite happy. And of course, we still have our pitch bender, you know, which is fantastic. I wish they'd do a modulation dial too. They have the space to do it. Um, you know, they could even put it right here or whatever, or maybe shrink the width of this down and put them side by side. But that would really complete it as being more um, usable with a modulation dial as well as the pitch bender, but whatever. So, um, it does come with a pretty uh, cheap sustain pedal, okay? But hey, at least they give us one. Um, not everybody's going to want to buy their, you know, wood stand, even though it's not that expensive, but... In order to use their three pedal unit, you need their stand, unless you're pretty handy with some tools and you can make your own makeshift little module that you can bolt the three pedal unit to, because it does also use a special plug in the back for that pedal unit, but the sustain pedal is off one port. Now, the nice thing is, is if you do have the three pedal unit, you can still use your sustain pedal and program it to do an alternate feature that is available within the menu for programming with. And you can do other things like maybe even turn your beats on and off because that's what I used to use mine for on my uh, 6, 660, I think it was, I bought the pedal rack for. Maybe I had it for both. I have to go back and check my own videos. It's been a while. But um, I bought, I opted out to buy a metal portable stand because number one, um, it's all metal. Number two, I can raise the height up to stand up and play or I can have it down all the way. Something you can't do with a wood stand. And there is the lifelong durability factor. The metal is going to be a lot stronger, more durable than wood over the years. <coughs> and at the time, I also hadn't realized how much they changed their pedal unit. Um, but turns out they did because it used to be a bar going across and it would become part of your stand, which made your stand a lot stronger. But it also added like a lot of weight because that stand, that wood stand is freaking heavy. But it also became a lot of complaints with people, which is why I think with the 670, Yamaha said, look, here's the keyboard. You okay? The price is relatively the same as the others, um, but you're not getting a stand anymore. You want the stand? Give us 120 bucks or whatever it is. It's not that expensive, right? Um, or buy something different. So for, I think I saved a couple of bucks by going to the steel stand, but the lights fold up. It's portable. Like I can just pick this up, boom, you know? It's not unbolt this for the next three hours and take the stand apart because I only got a little peanut car. You know, assemble, reassemble. That's hard on the stands over time, right? This, nah, nah, steel stand, folder up, go. As far as three pedal unit goes, yeah, eventually I'll probably buy that because it's an accessory for it. I want it and I'll just build my own little makeshift unit where I can make that a portable unit that's gonna be completely stationary. So for performing or just even moving stuff around in here, 
you know, it makes it a lot easier if I don't have to try and move a behemoth in one big piece. Separate pieces works for me. I was asked by another YouTuber about a review on the stand and to show him the stand. I will get that done later today as well. Uh, so if he's watching, yes, I'm finally working on it. I've been back at work since my wrist is healed up enough to do that. So I've been going nuts at work and of course um, I'm prioritizing things too uh, with, with everything else. So, but uh, anyways, so that's what we've got. Yes, I recommend it. Yes, it's worth every penny, even with that one part I'm ticked about. Um, and I would do it again. You know, I would buy one again, even though I know there's like a, that little sound effect issue thing that's driving me nuts. Um, I would still buy it again if I, if I needed to, you know. Um, I think it's fantastic, and the color screen, the, the it's just so much better, you know, and I, the quality of the sounds are also, I find, a lot better too, right, uh, which does make a difference in, hey, and the microphone access, awesome, and we can program the fully EQ, DSP effects, whatever we want for our voice, um, it's very flexible that way, I love it. Um, one button to get into the mic setting, right? You can play MP3s through this thing. Um, you got MIDI um, in and out stuff. Uh, recording USB stick here, and I think this has other features too. I'm gonna have to read up. I am getting through the features as I can go with this. And because of all the changes, it's kind of like, well, let's see what we're gonna do next. Um, you know, I still have to do the registration memory area, so I'll work on the USB stuff as well. See how much of that I can jam into one video too, right? And because uh, I want to try and keep those videos shorter. But either way, great machine. Highly recommend it. Um, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or pro player, this thing's going to cover your butt in all those areas, uh, which is fantastic. Um, I think you'd be pretty happy with this. Uh, especially when you compare it to a 660 or 650. This thing is so, so much better um, in every way, you know. And the price differences over the releases of them, I mean, they really didn't change hardly any at all, you know. Um, so that was great. Um, you know, mind you, the other ones did come with a stand, but, you know, who cares, right? Um, I'm actually happier with the stand I chose. Now, as far as me for a sustain pedal, what am I using? I've got an Amazon Basics pedal. I'm going to do a video on that too. Um, it has polarity reverse. I didn't buy it for this thing though. I actually bought it for one of my MIDI keyboards, but because I have this, I don't need the MIDI keyboards anymore. So it's like, yeah, well, I could use the pedal and it's high quality for under 20 bucks. And it definitely is way better than this cheap piece of plastic. Now they do have the higher end Yamaha pedals like this that are also cheap, that are all metal. But um, when you get my review on that Amazon Basics one, you'll see why you really shouldn't spend your money on the all-metal Yamaha pedal and you should get the Amazon Basics one. But we'll get to that in the next video because, yeah, it's going to be fun. Anyways, that's it. That's all I got for you. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Now go out and buy yourself a DGX670 because I am more than sure going to love it. But just as a cautionary, play one in store if they have one set up first. Okay, um, but there's also many videos on this um, keyboard on other YouTube channels too. So just check it out, you know, check out all my other tutorial videos on this as well that I have currently. Uh, check other channels, you know, especially if you can't get access to playing one already. Um, you know, we all do different things for our playing and showing you stuff. So, you know, you get a pretty good, well-rounded experience of this thing. I, I say either way, it's definitely a win-win in my books no matter what. Anyways, see ya.